This is the Sunday Matinee, I am The Wiz. When the merger of WB and Discovery happened, many were shocked by the corners being cut by the company. Slashing budgets, laying off workers, and canceling big projects were happening at a constant clip, which gave WB Discovery the look of a company that was having deep problems. Then the other streamers started following suit doing the same. Netflix, Amazon, and other streamers started canceling projects big and small while laying off many staff. It seemed like the streaming boom was over and the industry was starting to contract. But while the cancellation of Batgirl could be understood by some, the big thing that started happening with these services puzzled many. Exclusive streaming content being taken off of the service, mainly for tax write-off purposes or to dodge royalty payments. It started with HBO Max, now titled Max, ugh, canceling underperforming HBO shows like Westworld and taking it off the service. Then Netflix did it with its older content like Hemlock Grove. And now it's being announced that Paramount Plus is doing the same with content that was just released months ago, such as the prequel series to Grease. Now, some of you would say that it's the cost of doing business. There's a cost to keep this content on and it's not cheap, so it's better for the collective business to take the underperforming stuff and jettison it. It's a take that I actually agree with, but some have issue with the fact that these companies are not transparent at all with what shows are actually popular, which I admit is a fair point and can understand why some take issue with that. This has led to some understandable doom and gloom. What if a series you love becomes one of those in the chopping block? Instead of supporting the service that has it, are you just going to end up not watching it? Or are you going to pirate it? Maybe you will. These companies have likely did done the math and realized it costs more to keep it up than to just let you pirate it. But I like to talk about movies, so why am I interested in this topic? Well, the reality is that this will be coming to movies at some point in the very near future. Movies may carry a smaller file size than a fully blown TV series, but a lot of them have bigger budgets to content with, along with pricier payments when it comes to royalties. It makes logical sense that this very well may start happening with films in the future. And especially in services like Max and Netflix. Both are considered key services to have, mainly due to, to all the content that they have amassed on the service. But these services are learning quickly that the quantity over quality model is not viable in the streaming landscape. This will likely lead to these services contracting their content to a large degree. And yes, some of you might say, they're getting rid of the chaff, all quality shows are good for me, but we both know that's not how this works. Say you are an executive at Netflix, and you have the decision what actually stays on your service. Either the masterful, brutal film Beasts of No Nation, or the cheesy rom-com Falling for Christmas. Beast is an exemplary film that tells you about the brutality of war in an unflinching manner, and it's a testament to excellent 2010s filmmaking. Falling for Christmas is a rom-com about, well, Christmas. The film lover and all of us will say, Beasts, no question. But we don't matter in this equation. What matters is what gets views, what gets attention, what gets repeat viewings. I love Beasts of No Nation, but I am most assuredly not watching that film again for a long time. Maybe not ever. But I can see many more people wanting to watch and revisit Falling for Christmas, which will mean my business sense will have to take that. Now, let's pull back on the other Netflix exclusives that might be jettisoned. Look at The Irishman, Mank, Marriage Story, Power of the Dog, Business-wise, it just makes sense to get them off the service as soon as they are not financially viable. Now, those films mentioned, save for Mank, do have physical releases thanks to the Criterion Collection. But not all good movies that are streaming service exclusives have the luxury to rely on boutique labels to save them. This issue will pop up, no doubt. But Wiz, why won't these idiots just release them on Blu-ray and 4K? Physical media is best anyway. And while I do prefer my movies in physical form, I currently have about 600 behind me as we speak, the cost to mass produce them may not be business viable for the company who owns the property. Which leads to a question, how much money are you willing to spend to actually get a physical copy of the media that is legal? You may go to the store now and see Blu-rays and 4Ks ranging from $10 to $40 depending on special editions and how new the title is, but are you willing to spend more than that? How about double? maybe even triple. The reason why those discs are that price is because of them being mass produced. The company that presses the discs give the studios a discount for buying so many discs, which lowers the cost coming to you. But if they have a smaller batch, the costs are more prohibitive and the studios will want to recoup those costs. Which leads me to this question. If you are a fan of a show or movie that is leaving a service, would you pay $120 for a hard copy of that show on 4K? 
And this may also not be exclusive to new movies either. It's recently been announced that there are layoffs at Turner Classic Movies, with many people thinking that TCM might be on the chopping block as a whole next. And while I don't think TCM is going away in its entirety, it will likely change. It may just be a brand under uh, WB Discovery or a Tubi channel that they license out. I think the terrestrial TV channel, however, will likely be gone. But what if classic films like Gone with the Wind, Cool Hand Luke, and How Green Was My Valley suddenly stop getting the views on streaming services? Will they also likely be jettisoned as well? And while there are abundant resources to get these movies on disc, not all classics will have that distinction. The likeliest outcome I see with all this contracting I think these services will start farming out their underperforming titles to other services or free channels like Tubi and Freebie. That is what's rumored that Paramount Plus is doing, and it's all but confirmed that WB Discovery is doing that with their less popular HBO shows. The point in all of this is for these companies to make money. And if the show or movie isn't bringing in the viewers like they want, why exactly are they gonna keep them? It just makes business sense to me. And the migration for paid content over to free services with ads may be a great thing for these shows if they make it on there. Remember, these services have to pay for those licenses as well. What if Westworld ends up being a huge hit on those free services and they order a final season? I mean, that's certainly possible. Not really, but it's, it's nice to think. Get the doom and gloom over losing these shows you may have liked, but, but the key thing is if these companies can make money on them, they will return. Either on other services or physical media, they won't turn down a profit. And while I know some of you are hesitant to trust these companies, and honestly, I don't blame you, I don't either, trust in this. If it can make money in some way, it will be back. Otherwise, you can pirate and these companies know that too. If it makes business sense not to get you to do that, they will give you the option not to. I'm not saying stand down, of course get angry, but if Westworld had to go to free services so we can get another Succession-like show, or Beast of No Nation type movie, isn't that a plus in itself? And that is it for this Sunday matinee. Monday, I will be doing the Gaming News Roundup, and Tuesday, Zero and I will review Weird, the Al Yankovic story. And until then, I am The Wiz, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.